on to um, IO's Hitman 3 VR news. Steve, you got this one. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's not quite breaking news, but I thought it would be a great, uh, fun talking point. I mean, Hitman 3 is releasing on PC and console uh, next week on January 20th, um, making it kind of one of this, uh, the first big AAA releases of the year so far. Um, and then ahead of the release, IO Interactive released a two-minute-long trailer uh, that they called the, the Sandbox VR trailer. Um, and the basis of Hitman 3, obviously, is continuing the, the world of assassination arc that first began 2016 with the original Hitman. Uh, but now, now this game is incorporating a full-fledged support for PSVR, not only for Hitman 3, but the entire trilogy. So you can... If you if you purchase Hitman Three, uh, you also get all that content from the first game, the second game, and now the third one, all in PSVR. Yeah. And I don't know, like for me, I've always been a really big Hitman fan. I feel like a lot of people kind of just let it go under the radar nowadays. But uh, I think IO Interactive now has this really cool spot where they created like this assassination simulator, but at the same time create like this really wacky comedic uh this gameplay loop as well yeah. and i'm just looking at this this new trailer and i'm seeing a lot of great opportunities not only for immersion but just for awesome gameplay uh one moment that stood out to me and that incorporates kind of a new mechanic is uh as the player you can walk up to an enemy tap his shoulder go to the side the enemy like looks around his shoulder and then you just slug him in the face it's just <laughs> <laughs> really stupid things like that but like then there's also you know the the awesome you know trappings of a hitman game like going into a building and taking out this target with a with a weapon or a blunt object anything like that hitting over like um the thing that holds open like a piano crushing someone you know it's standard hitman fair but i'm just yeah. i'm just thinking of like the larger picture here and playing a whole hitman trilogy in vr has me really excited i just want to know like whether you guys are hitman fans if you guys have played the the new games recently or if you know having psvr support is something that entices you to pick this game up i i'm bad at stealth games so yeah. i unfortunately like i can't uh i can't like bring myself to love the hitman games from like my perspective but like watching someone who's good at them it's right. a lot of fun and i think and i see and understand the appeal of Hitman and the replayability of it is that you may complete, like you may do the job, yeah. but you want to replay the mission to see how you could do it differently or all the right. different ways that you can kill your target. And I think that that's cool. And yeah, I mean, this is, I feel the right way to implement something in VR, not mm -hmm. just, you know, saying Hitman three is a VR game, but rather saying we're coming out with a Hitman three. And also we're working on like a VR thing for all the Hitman games for you to experience. If that's something that you're into, it mm -hmm. could potentially even bring somebody who is a fan of Hitman in general to want to get a PlayStation VR headset and try it out for the first time and see what VR is all about. You know, this yeah. is this is I feel the best way to kind of like synergize the 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 way we see gaming right now and maybe the way that gaming will be seen in like a decade or so from now. Yeah. Um, and so we'll see like how this plays out. But like it looked cool. Like that trailer looked sweet. Like it looked like a lot of fun, you know, like it, between that and like Half-Life Alex, I feel like VR is starting to head into the direction of like you need to try it. Like you got to right. see what the what the hype is all about. Uh, and I just wonder how it'll continue to progress. I feel like um, VR has always been that thing everyone wants to try because being in a video game is something everyone always wanted to yeah. do when they were yeah. a kid, you know, playing games. But the problem is, yes, affordability, having access to VR headsets. I know PlayStation has made it more affordable um, for people who already own a PlayStation console. However, however, for me personally, it's just something I... I don't know what it is. It's hard for me to commit to buying the VR headset to then mm -hmm. playing these games. When I go to convention stuff, conventions, um, I definitely try out all the VR titles. Right. But to then go home and play VR, I think that's a really hard sell for people. And I don't know what the key to that is. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like maybe ha it has to be bundled in with when you buy your console. I think it has sure. to be included, um, especially for myself as a console gamer, to really get people on board um, for them wanting to try 
uh, VR game. I'm a yeah. fan of Hitman. I've actually had the pleasure of, of visiting IO Interactive in Copenhagen. And mm, like, wow. their studio is like awesome. Um, and like that team is just so dedicated. Like some of the things that, <laughs> some of the things that I wish I had it, their team has at their desk. Like they make all this extra stuff for no reason. Like they just love <laughs> Agent 47. They have like cutouts. Like you remember those cutouts, like activities where you have like a person and then you could put clothes on them. And it's oh, just yeah, paper. Yeah. So, like and on the back make- of a Lunchable. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> they made like these, this huge cutout with Agent 47. He's in his drawers. He's not completely naked if you're wondering. And you could place clothes on him like different outfits they had the flamingo outfit and this is just something that they just made for their own fun like you know they, they didn't have to do that but that just shows how much they're a fan of the this ip and what's more interesting i think with this news this vr news we know that they're working on the next 007 do we think right. we're going to see a collection of 007 vr games because i mean Maybe. everyone wants to be james bond yeah. Maybe I based like, off the success of this, you never know. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I feel like probably not, but just just not because that's not a great concept, and they might do a spinoff or something like that. But I think that kind of cuts down on their potential audience, mm-hmm. just because like like VR is a really great asset, and it's great that developers are pushing boundaries with it and doing different things. Mm-hmm. But if if 007 is only VR, it'll you know like you all, oh. all of a sudden you've reduced your your, your what, what you can do yeah like the yeah. focus will think, definitely be on on general audience yeah i don't think that the core game will be vr i think they're still gonna release a core 007 game mm-hmm. but do we think we'll see a 007 vr experience like how they did the batman vr experience or the I, iron man I mean, right VR experience yeah. Uh, but first of all, like the Iron Man thing, that's that's one of those things where it's like, oh, there's a new Iron Man game. Oh, oh it's it's a VR game. Yeah. Okay. Have you tried it? <laughs> um, I haven't tried it. I, oh I, I heard God. it's good. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm so trying good. not to like, yeah, I'm not like talking crap, but like at the end of the day, you know, would you would you choose a third person action adventure Iron Man game or an Iron Man VR game? You know, like yeah. for me, I would rather have like an open world, like straight up Iron Man game. But like, you know, I I, I can see it depends and probably will. Uh, mostly hinge on the success of this Hitman VR game. If they mm-hmm. see that they're mm-hmm. selling Hitman 3 pretty well and they're selling Hitman VR pretty well, that could definitely be something that they consider with this James Bond game. Yeah, I think they, they'll they obviously look at this and say, okay, well, we've got X amount of people purchasing Hitman 3. How many of those are then going, putting on their PSVR headset mm-hmm. and and going through it that way? Uh, they can obviously look at that kind of data on the back end. But I do think that there is a potential, like Camille brought up, that we could see something like Project 007 take on this form, where it's like, okay, we do have the the core game, the core third-person action-adventure game, whatever they're creating for the mainstream audience, but then there's also this tacked-on VR experience, because if, they, if they're going all out for VR in this kind of way, they're not doing it for a one-off. That that's almost yeah. guaranteed. Like yeah. they have to be putting their resources into something else. And the fact that they're doing this as a supplemental experience on Hitman 3 with no additional cost makes me believe that they're investing in something for the future. They're test yeah. they're using this as a test bed for maybe a, a totally separate game, or maybe this is going to play into Project 007 in a big way. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm I'm always curious like how much they can profit off of like selling that edition like if mm-hmm. playstation can advertise hey like our version of the game has this exclusive vr right. mode like all, they might throw a couple million their way and, and that can subset some of the development costs like that's real steam could do that the like for a version of that for their headset is like you know like there's always money to be made there yeah so i think i think it's probably probably like just selling points for these these devs that are, have like a horse in that race like xbox i don't know if they really they would they don't benefit from that right whereas the other ones do because it's an mm. exclusive feature yeah. yeah and i mean it is exclusive to only psvr this isn't coming yeah. to oculus or anything like yeah, that so yeah, right. under they that impression like gave the money exactly yeah, yeah there's a pretty big stake in that from sony yep um but yeah again i mean i really hope that more people uh at least try and give this a chance because 
like we said, Project 007 is probably going to be their next project. It might yeah. be a while till we ever see Agent 40, 47 again. So if if you've been curious on Hitman and been like, okay, well, maybe I've missed the previous two games. Hitman 3's got it all. Yeah. And That's yeah, sweet. look also yeah, look the at, games are like super consumer friendly. You know, oh, usually you see, yeah. you, you see like a, a sequel to a game and it's like, forget the last one. Here's the new one. But yeah. like yeah. Every new Hitman game, they're like, no, we're porting in all the old maps exactly. from the last game and putting it into this one. So it's like, oh, you want the definitive experience? Get Hitman 3. But if, you, if you're just a Hitman fan in general, like you're getting new maps and new things to try out. So like it's, I love that. I think that's super, super cool. Mm -hmm. It's really awesome. Uh, th do you think that that might have something to do with it? Because I know they, they were originally part of Square Enix and they separated. Mm. They retained the IP. Right. So I wonder if it's a publishing thing. Could be. It could I be. I see that being the I case. I don't know. Yeah. Because it's smart. I, it's smart regardless. It's really pro-consumer. I love it. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'm just always curious about the back end of those sorts of deals. I think it also has to play into them building up a lot of consumer faith. Because mm -hmm. if, if everyone recalls when Hitman uh, released in 2016, they went episodic. And I think burned a lot of bridges with a lot of consumers and a lot yeah. of players. Uh, I mean, even more so than coming off of Hitman Absolution, which people mm -hmm. criticized up and down. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Releasing episodic, I think, really hurt them, which is why they deviated to releasing like a full game for Hitman 2. And then mm -hmm. again, here and with Hitman 3, I think it's just a way of being like, okay, well, if you weren't interested in Hitman four years ago, we're giving you a reason to invest now. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I love it. So I know, like, for us, we're not too much into VR. And I think for all of gaming, we know that's kind of like a niche audience. But mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to look it up quickly because I'm not too familiar with what the sales are like in VR, right? So I went on uh, Gamma Sutra and they projected in 2020, 3.3 million standalone headsets would have been sold. So they actually met that um, in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the VR content is actually trending to grow from 1.1 1. 1, uh, million, or sorry, billion uh, to 4.1 billion in 2025. So there's obviously an uphill trend that they are yeah. seeing. It's on the rise. It's more accessible. I don't get that market just because, you know, like I said, it's it's hard for me to adapt to that. Sure. But that may possibly be the future of gaming. I know we always dawdle around whether VR is going to take over how we game. And although I don't think that's going to be likely, I think it's going to yeah. be another um, avenue of how you can game. I do feel like studios are trying to get in on this early, right? They're yep. trying to test out what is capable. And that's why they see the value of putting out something like Half-Life Alex, right? Mm -hmm. uh, putting out this uh, Hitman VR collection. So I don't think it's too far-fetched to see a studio like IO really invest, like Steve said, in the long term and see what they could do with their other IPs. And I I'm going to say it. I really do believe we're going to see 007 in VR, um, maybe not at release of the the next James Bond game, but maybe a few years after. And the tinfoil hat not, is on. And it may there not it be is. a full-fledged game, but I think it's going to be an experience similar to probably like Iron Man or the Batman experience. It's just something that you try out, you have. Yeah. And then if it's – and that, I think, if you do James Bond, like if you do a 007 VR, I think you could go further than Half-Life Alex. Like it really – you could really test – the capabilities. Um, so I, I hope, you know, depending on what we see here with and what the trailer shows, I feel very hopeful for this Hitman experience. And I hope that it just keeps going for a potential 007 VR game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'm think, sure, I'm, I, I think that'll happen. Yeah. 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 I think, I think like eventually, that. like, I don't know how far down the road, but I, I can see down the road, there end up being a conversation where it's like, oh, you know, this this group of players they play on consoles. This group of players plays on PC. This group of players plays VR. You know, like I can see right. a demographic really growing there because there it, it is a niche audience. But I feel like more so now than ever, I'm seeing like friends of mine or just people like in our space that play VR games or that try out VR games or do mm -hmm. stuff like like Among Us VR. Somebody made like uh, a VR thing for Among Us. You know, and you see a lot of people trying that out and stuff like that. So. I can see it becoming a thing down the line. I, I It's got a ways to go still yeah. before it hits sort of mainstream almost. Um, but I, I see the potential there. 
Okay, so here's a real question. Do you think mm-hmm. they brand it as GoldenEye? <laughs> Ooh, oh. <laughs> That'd Wait be so sec. cool. Everyone would be so familiar. I, I think if you're doing a VR she experience, something. you have to do That'd something that grand. kind of pulls on the nostalgia, you know, yeah. like gets piques people's interest. Yeah. Like 007 would do that, but a GoldenEye VR experience. I mean, well, you got headlines, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh man, I I think you actually just hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Because <laughs> honestly, like when you look at Goldeneye, like even just a- as it is right now, the movement and everything almost it almost looks like a heavy VR game. game, or, 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 yeah, or even like, even that. Yeah. Yeah. So like I can see, I could see that. I could see them going oh god, Goldeneye gonna, VR. I'm gonna be in facility hiding in the washroom stall, just sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine it's a multiplayer VR experience. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah. But I know like multiplayer VR, there, there's lots of bugs with it. It's rough. Yeah. It's really rough. I've played a few and mm. it's it's not a great, it's not okay. a great time. Oh no. Oh. I just want first person odd job. <sighs> Throw my hat. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the person no one could get, but just gets outed with the hat so good. um so good. <laughs> it's the height thing if i could just ho- like tilt the golden gun to the side like this oh, that's all you need right i feel so cool I'd be, I'd be the coolest guy no i just want to set up <laughs> that's a, all we need like in your house right <laughs> yeah oh uh, vr golden eye that that's an experience good on you riley for thinking yeah, about that i like that i have ideas every once in a while every once in a while <laughs> have a good one. So what other franchise would we want to see in vr um oh wow i don't know uh like we got batman i thought that was cool uh it's a nice fun little thing but like i like at the end of the day or so we're talking about a gaming franchise that already currently exists as its own game that we could potentially bring to vr hmm like part of me is like let's see what spider-man could be like but also part of me is like there would be a lot of people throwing up if something like that was in vr you know like (laughs) the (laughs) On that, for the Iron Man experience, uh, Riley, Steve, I'm not too sure if you guys tried it out too, but yep. um, you like I, that was one VR experience, and I could handle my roller coasters, I could handle VR, but I got motion sickness just because of how really? Iron Man flies, and then you're trying to aim and like shoot. It, it's just it was a lot. It was a lot, and you com- feel like you're flying. I was complete opposite where I went in, uh, I stra- like in my living room, I strapped in and I was like, I'm going to throw up in about half an hour. Cause I, I'm 50, 50 on whether or not well, I get motion timed it out the second you put it on. Yeah. I was like, and go. <laughs> like, I got 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I got 30 minutes. Uh, no, I, I was totally fine. I was really surprised how, how little locomotion I suffered when I played. And especially like when floating and doing like the, uh, multitasking between keeping myself afloat and then like, shooting and stuff. I thought I thought they did a phenomenal job with that, and one of the best VR experiences I've personally had. Mm. The only thing I remember, because I got to do like it was a it was like a full event I got to do for like Batman Arkham VR. Mm-hmm. Um, but the only thing that I remember specifically, like that, like tripped me out was when you get on the elevator that sends you down into the bat cave, right. like yeah. I actually felt like the vertigo looking down, yeah. you know, like it felt like I was moving in an elevator. I was like, Oh my God. Like it was, it was trippy, but like, yeah, I haven't tried bat- or Iron Man VR yet. I have heard that it low, low motion sickness from some people. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure like how I'd react to it. Um, but I know like for, for instance, someone like my brother can't do it. Like he, he cannot <laughs> do it. He will not oh, be able to survive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because when he did Arkham VR, like that elevator sequence, like he had to take a second because it like really gave him vertigo, you know? So wow, it's a uh, it's it's an interesting thing, but it, it it it's still like it'll have its audience. Yeah. But there will still certainly be people who like who might not be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, going back to your question, Camille, uh, on like IPs and franchises we want in VR. I think something like Silent Hill or Resident Evil, like a full Resident Evil. Yeah. Uh, built for VR would be amazing. Yeah, they did cool, Biohazard. Yeah. They had a um, you know you could play. Yeah, VR, but yeah. it was built for right. VR. Yeah. Um, oh my God, PT. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Like, Ugh. if we get oh, Silent Hills, like actually, I, I, yeah. I could not. I could not do that. I'm such a wimp. <laughs> Honestly, I just can't be too afraid. 
Uh, oh, I think Mario Kart, something simple like that would be really cool. Ooh. I know they're kind of exploring that with like Universal Studios. They have a VR right. Mario Kart attraction. Cool. So if they could bring that to the home, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, that the smell of a banana peel just being thrown at you. <laughs> in their- in your- <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Full 4D experience yeah. uh, would be awesome. Chat says Mario Party, Smash, Arms. I don't know about those. <laughs> I don't. Arms would be Smash VR. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, Nintendo Labo supports VR for Smash, but Smash. it's, it's, it's like, so weird. You can, like look around the stage and stuff while yeah. you're fighting on it. it. It it doesn't work though. I think for fighting games, like I know you're a huge uh, Mortal Kombat fan, but for fighting games, I feel like it would be really rough in VR. Really rough to do a fighting game. Imagine trying yeah. to pull off a combo. A yeah. <laughs> Your motion like is trying to do yeah. I, I had enough of a tough time doing like the Wii boxing, okay? Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about being able to be in full VR for a fighting game, just even trying to survive. Yeah. Try try doing a fatality in VR. Tell Seriously. Seriously. Like, I'm down, down, yeah. down, four <laughs> punch. <laughs> like, right just up, thinking yeah. about it. I know. Oh, yeah. I'm getting sick just thinking about it. Um, but with that, let's take a quick break uh, to kind of set, settle our vertigo. And then we'll be back with our next two topics. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. 